Hey guys, and welcome back to Ellie Knows Rocks. I am standing in the beautiful Francis Creek. Come join me as I look for Native American ruins, minerals, describe the geology, and go swimming in some beautiful swimming holes. Thank you so much for being part of my adventure, and let's get to it. Now, to get down to this area, I'm pretty sure it took us about four hours on the side-by-side. -side. The road is extremely rocky, and you have to go over several mesas in order to get here. Quite a bumpy trip, and seeing as how we did this in the summer, immediately when we got out of the side-by-side, -side, we wanted to get into the water and have something cold to drink. And we didn't waste any time unpacking, taking everything we shoved into the side-by-side -side out, and then finding some firewood with a beverage in hand. This entire area is very highly volcanic, meaning that there are a lot of different volcanic flows and eruptions throughout the years. There are no currently active volcanoes in this area. The clear blue water, also used for swimming holes, supplies the town of Baghdad with their drinking water. It gives a whole new meaning of not to pee in the water, right? The water is well filtered though. Volcanic rock creates a great filtration system for water when it's being used for agriculture and human use. This entire area, though not as cool as the Grand Canyon, was cut by water just like the Grand Canyon was cut. And old Native American civilizations made their homes up on top of the mesas like we're looking at now. This particular area of Francis Creek is privately owned by some of the ranchers. We know some of the ranchers personally, and they gave us explicit permission to be out here camping, looking around, and hiking. A lot of what we're looking at are old foundations built up of basalt. Although tumbled down by now, these would have been, I believe, small walls that the Native Americans would have used to build up part of their homes. In this area, you find shards of old arrowheads, monos, matats, and other things that look like they were Native American made. I believe that this was a good vantage point for them to maybe farm crops, have a good look out over the side of the edge of the hill to see if anybody was coming, as well as to escape the water. I can only imagine this area flooded quite often, especially with monsoon down the canyon. I would say the one thing that really frustrated me about this place Although it is on semi-private land and the ranchers own it, there was still an overabundance of trash that we kept picking up and putting in a garbage bag. So please guys, when you go camping, you pack it in. So please pack it out, don't leave the trash. Now, after I was done looking at all of the foundations and hiking around with my boyfriend, I decided to go crawling a couple mesas over so that I could do some rock hounding to look for some Jasper, possible chert in the areas, and desert agates. Today I'm outside looking for desert agates. Desert agates are primarily found in volcanic areas, so I am up on top of a mesa near Francis Creek in Arizona, close to Baghdad. And today this is what we're looking for. Desert agates. They're very pretty, they're multicolored, and they're very different from ocean agates because they're not tumbled, they're extremely rough, and they need to be put through a rock tumbler in order to get that really nice smooth edge. Over here, bigger piece of jasper. That's pretty sweet. There's a cool white and gray desert agate. It's a pretty cool red desert agate. You can kind of see it inside there. So it's about 100 plus degrees outside today. And if you're gonna go hiking in the desert, always take water, don't forget it, don't get dehydrated, and keep yourself safe. So after I was thoroughly boiling hot from exploring, hiking, and rock hounding, we decided to go to the next really beautiful swimming hole. This area is right next to the pump station. 
The water is absolutely crystal clear. It's nice and cool. And the rock formations of the pyroclastic flow that have been cut by meteoric water and different monsoons are absolutely breathtaking. The holes and crevices in this pyroclastic flows are there due to poor silicification during the time of volcanic deposition and are more easily eroded during the rain and flood events but they leave a beautiful cave-like effect. Hey guys, so this is Francis Creek, another little swimming hole. And that right up there, in the rock nestled up there, is an old gas pump. And you see the line coming out of it? That used to take water all the way up this hill to the very top of the mesa. And they were sucking it out of this pond right here. It's ancient, but it's pretty cool. A, the rock that it's stuck in is a big old piece of basalt on that side and just to the left of it is a pyroclastic flow that abuts it. This is considered a volcanic rock contact where two different types of eruptions occurred. Many people, even myself, can confuse a pyroclastic flow with a conglomerate and the reason being in this area a lot of the fluvial systems have rounded rocks and this pyroclastic flow, when it erupted, interacted with those rocks on the ground, scooping them up as it rolled over them and solidified around those round rocks, making it appear like it was a conglomerate. You can see the rounded rocks, they're all different colors, shapes, sizes, and that kind of thing. But you can see the pyroclastic matrix or the ash flow tuff with in between each one of those rounded rocks. And each one of those rounded rocks came from the river system that was here way before the volcano erupted. Through this system, you can see that there were different pyroclastic flows at different times. There are different bigger rocks that got scooped up and then almost in a gradation effect, the smaller rocks were scooped up later. And even in some parts of the pyroclastic flow, there are barely any rocks at all, which means it exploded more violently and landed on top of the rocks instead of flowing down to scoop up the rocks within the matrix. I'm no expert in volcanology, but this is how this particular pyroclastic flow formed. And the reason it's cut and it looks the way that it does is because the river cut it over centuries of time. Volcanoes can erupt different types of lava, thus giving us the basalt. This rock right here is basalt, a very common volcanic rock. Have you ever seen boulders like this and wondered why there's a bunch of bubbles in them? These bubbles come from escaping gases as the basalt was erupting. As it flows, gases get trapped within the rock. As it cools, these gas bubbles expand and the rock hardens around each individual gas bubble, creating those bubbled lines, almost like petrified gas. Sometimes the basalt lava will have an overabundance of gas creating partial or larger bubble lines. After I was done exploring with rocks, Dan and I thoroughly enjoyed swimming around and taking photos. I liked trying to play with the fish by catching them, which didn't work. We swam all over the place, including all the way down this channel and back. We had a snack on the shore while we enjoyed this beautiful view. And then eventually we went to the top of the mesa where we enjoyed the sunset. I would not have been able to do any of this adventure without my side-by-side -side because of how rough it was to get here. Thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. I'll see you on the next one.